Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see it, yeah. Uh, okay, great. So I, I had some troubles with the connection today. If uh, there are uh, some interruptions, please let me know and I will try to connect to the other network. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to speak here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the correspondence between the Pandripanda Thomas theory and the M theory. Um, first, uh, let me remind you what is DT or PT theory. It's a, a theory of counting of one dimensional subschemes in a, a three dimensional uh, ma ma manifold, uh, not necessarily Calabi Yau. So the Pandripanda Thomas moduli space is the space of pairs. Uh, of a shift f and a section s so that f is a pure one dimensional shift and s is a section so that the kernel of it is zero dimensional and the deformation abstraction theory is uh, so that the tangent space is uh, defined by this formula the other characteristic of f plus uh, the other characteristic of from F to O minus the other characteristic from F to F. And it doesn't depend on uh, the section. Uh, for toric varieties, this can be computed by localization as a series in the um, Keller parameter. So for example, if we have some toric geometry O of M plus O of M over P1, then we have this toric diagram and the partition function is defined as a series in the uh, Keller parameter, chi, uh, Keller parameter Z of Z to the Euler characteristic times the Euler uh, characteristic of the virtual structure shift over the moduli space uh, of Pandripanda Thomas of uh, curves of degree k and the other characteristic chi. And uh, by localization, this uh, has a factorization of con uh, two contributions of two um, fixed points of the, uh, many of the variety x. And so in the formula, we have v of t1, t2, and q inverse, which corresponds to vertex for c3. And uh, it is multiplied by the same uh, with shifted variables. Uh, and now let's talk about the membrane side. Uh, the space of uh, membrane, membranes, M2, is a certain compactification um, of the moduli space of immersed holomorphic curves. So uh, C is a one dimensional scheme, it is mapped to Z. Uh, and we impose stability condition so that in nice situations there are a um, finite number of invariant stable membranes. So first is that F should be isomorphism uh, almost everywhere. And second uh, is that for any proper subscheme, C prime, the slope should be a larger then the slope for C. And the slope is the ratio of the Euler characteristic over the degree. And let's consider example. If uh, uh, we have a line bundle over a uh, base and uh, C uh, be a double zero section, then um, the Euler characteristic of such subscheme is twice the other characteristic of the base minus degree of L. So for example, if L were a trivial bundle, then it would be just uh, all the characteristic of two sections independent. And for twisted bundles, uh, it gets this modification. And according to this formula, uh, C is stable if and only if the degree of the bundle is positive. So the um, uh, membrane can, can double only in positive direction. 
Uh, and so the main example is when we have four line bundles over the base P1. And uh, uh, this five dimensional manifold should be a Calab Yau space so that the uh, sum of degrees of bundles is negative two. So membranes are, we can think of them as, uh, so uh, as maps, uh, aspirational maps from P1 to Hilbert Kim of points, but I have a mistake here, not necessarily two, but any N. And for N equals one or two, this space is much nicer. So we have a uh, torus that scales fibers, T1, T2, T3, T4, uh, for all uh, four bundles. And we have also one, uh, one dimensional torus, uh, C star Q, so that Q is the weight uh, of P1 at, at point zero. Also it takes, uh, in, uh, in fibers. We have some lineariza linearization of uh, bundles. So uh, the question is how to describe invariant membranes for this action. So uh, for degree one, we have just one, uh, we have just a single uh, stable membrane, P1 uh, as a zero section. And its contribution in uh, the localization formula is uh, a hat of the minus Euler characteristic of the sum of bundles. So a hat is the symmetrized version of, um, uh, of the symmetric power. So the tangent space is uh, just the cohomology of uh, line bundles. And the Keller parameter uh, under this identification, it acts uh, equivalently. So that the ratio of two last coordinates uh, of two uh, last uh, weights for bundles is uh, z squared. For example, if we consider this geometry, uh, three trivial bundles and uh, a minus two bundle, uh, then uh, all bundles are non-positive. So uh, there are no stable um, uh, membranes of the, of the kind of example that we considered. Uh, so let's consider degree one contribution. It is this ratio because uh, it, it consists of cohomology of O, which we have in the uh, denominator and the cohomology of O of minus two, which we have in the numerate, numerator because uh, it has uh, only odd cohomology. And it turns out that the full answer for all degrees has this nice, nice plethistic form, which means that only uh, all stable, uh, all membranes are uh, combinations of uh, degree one membranes and there are no uh, other connected uh, states. Uh, for degree two, it should be something like maps from P1 to the Hilbert scheme of two points over uh, on C4, and Hilbert scheme of two points in C4 is C4 times uh, C4 over Z2, then if we have four bundles, which is sum of uh, Li over P1, then we can consider orbifold bundle, replace uh, these four bundles by Hilbert scheme. So we get uh, sum of uh, line bundles and some, some of them uh, divided by Z2. So in this case, the simplest membranes are decomposable and their character is the symmetric square of um, the other characteristic of bundles. And uh, uh, all 
other membranes are parameterized are, are different from this one by some uh, defects and defects uh, turn out to be described by divisors on p1 uh, where something happens with double sections so um they seem uh, the other uh, simplest membranes are the following if we have some line bundle li then we have double zero section and more generally if we take a, any uh, divisor any effective divisor on p1 then there is a map uh, from li of minus d to li the map s um, and uh, we can take a membrane uh, a double zero section for li of uh, minus d and uh, push it forward to li um, and such membranes are, sta are semi-stable uh, only if degree of d is less or equal than degree of li and uh, the moduli space uh, is proper because uh, the degree of d is bounded and uh, for each uh, fixed degree we have integration over uh, over compact variety so uh, m theoretic counts are integrals over a bunch of moduli spaces uh, of effective divisors on p1 for example if we consider O of minus one uh, three times plus O of one, there is only one positive direction and membranes can double only in O of one direction. So, uh, yeah. yes? When you say effective divisors on P1, is that just the symmetric product of P1? Or is there something like if I have an, an effective divisor on P1 is just some collection of points, right? Exactly, yes. And so that just records there, it's just the same thing as the symmetric product or is, it, is there some kind of more structure? Yes, it's the same as symmetric product, but the abstraction, the abstra abstraction theory is different. Uh, we have some ab abstraction bundle and I will describe what it is. Okay. Oh, okay. By the way, can, can you hear me or because I heard Noah with some interruptions? Can you hear you, me? Here? You sound fine to me. Maybe it's my problem. Okay, let's continue. So in this case, uh, membranes can, can double only in O of one direction and uh, the degree of divisor is bounded by um, by, by, by uh, uh, Sorry, uh, let me think. Uh, yes, there is no this. I, I was wrong. Oh. Sorry, it doesn't respond. Let me uh, reconnect. Sorry for these technical problems. So the last uh, was wrong. So degree is uh, bounded by one because degree of bundle of one is one. So we have integrals over P1, P0 and P1 in this case. So the, uh, okay, let's continue. And now uh, discuss the abstraction theory. For a uh, membrane, 
for example, uh, which is doubled in L1 and uh, with defect described by uh, the divisor D. The, uh, the tangent space is the following. First of all, uh, we can de uh, deform this membrane by letting the divisor go. So we have tangent space um, to the symmetric uh, power of Q1. And then we have uh, the polar characteristic of the following bundles. Uh, L1 plus L2 plus L L3 plus L4 plus uh, L1 of minus D squared plus uh, L2 plus L L3 plus L4 times the dual. So the term L1 of minus D squared, it has the following meaning. If we have, so this section is described by um, uh, the equation X squared equals zero, where X is the coordinate coordinate in L1 of minus D. So if we want to deform this equation, X squared equals zero, uh, it will be X squared plus PX plus Q equals zero. And uh, uh, so we have two deformation parameters, uh, P and Q. One of them is uh, L1 of minus D squared and the other uh, P is L1 of minus D. So this L1 of minus D squared corresponds to uh, Q. And the term for deformation uh, of P, it cancels with something else and I simplified it. So, and um, the last part is the deformation in directions of L2, L3 and L4. So it is described by nilpotent uh, elements uh, so it's, uh, these are nilpotent sections of uh, restrictions of bundles L2, L3, and L4 to the membrane. Uh, so, and let's denote Zn alpha. Doesn't, doesn't move again. Okay, maybe I should do. So, and uh, let's consider this generating function sum over alpha from one to four, which parameterized bundle where the membrane doubles and sum over n greater or equal than zero of i to degree of Li minus m times the contribution uh, alpha n. So this, um, so, so n is the degree over, uh, or degree of divisor. So we integrate over all, over divisors of all uh, degrees and the packet to generating function. It is a Loran uh, series in y inverse with the, with the rational coefficient. And the claim is that it is a uh, polynomial in Y. So all uh, terms with negative degrees in Y cancel with each other. So it's a polynomial in Y of degree, uh, maximal degree of uh, bundles L alpha. But for negative terms, for example, Y inverse, it doesn't um, cancel trivially. Uh, they cancel with each other and between different bundles. So uh, if we only if we sum over all alpha from one to four, then it cancels. Uh, otherwise, these terms are very, uh, very complicated. So, and also um, the term of degree zero, y to zero, uh, contribution, it is the platistic square of degree integral uh, or degree one integral. So uh, y to zero uh, terms are contributions of semi-stable membranes and they are platistic uh, expon exponent of uh, some other modular space of degree one. So let's uh, consider a toy example some other example when we have some 
over uh, divisors, sum of integrals over modular spaces of divisors. This is the example of local curve. A local curve, um, uh, when, we when we consider uh, Pandere Thomas moduli space, uh, consider shift F and the section S so that uh, o, uh, OC, which is OX modulo, the annihilator of F, is a smooth reduced curve. So uh, this is actually the case of degree one for, for this simple geometry. Then uh, we have uh, the co-kernel of S de uh, defines a divisor on uh, on the curve C and the um, the part of Pandere Pandere Thomas moduli space for this fixed C is the moduli space uh, is the union of symmetric powers of C. And uh, deformation and the abstraction theory uh, for C it is just deformation of C and it's a co it's cohomology of of the normal bundle to C. And the part which fixes C and uh, uh, moves just the divisor is the abstraction part is the determinant of the no, uh, normal bundle. So we have integral over the wedge uh, power of the dual to abstraction bundle and the symmetric power uh, of C. It is a rational function in Z. And in case uh, when uh, uh, the uh, uh, suppose L1 and, and L2 are so that uh, it is Calabi Yau uh, threefold, then it is monomial in Z, in Z. And if the degree of them is larger than minus two, then it is polynomial in Z. And in general, it is uh, its dependence on the Keller parameter is uh, looks like the symmetric power of the uh, of the other characteristic of L3 and L4, M maybe minus here, uh, symmetric power of minus of the other characteristic. So if um, L3 plus, uh, ah, it should be times. So, so if, um, f f suppose for example, L1 and L2 are positive, then, uh, we have cohomology of it and we have denominators in Z. And if they are negative, then um, they have odd cohomology and we have numerator instead of denominator and that's why it is polynomial in Z. And this looks very similar to the degree two M theoretical case because we have, uh, we have uh, uh, Calabi-Yau uh, manifold Calabi-Yau five-dimensional variety and we have polynomial in Y. If we don't require some of degrees of four line bundles to be uh, minus two, then it's, uh, it fails to be polynomial in Y. That's why it may be described by some uh, higher dimensional geometry. Um, okay. Uh, this this allows us to introduce the M theoretical vertex for C phi. It is a, a, a four component vector um, with coefficients, uh, which depends on all variables, and it is a Laurent series in Y inverse. So it has four components and they are described as follows. So if we define uh, analog of Pohammer uh, symb uh, symbol Xn to be the product of n shifted uh, a hat function of X, then uh, this uh, vertex, it is, uh, it's uh, just this uh, series 
similar to hypergeometric, but it's not hypergeometric because in the numerator we have 2n instead of n. And it's uh, a solution to Q difference equation. Uh, this is the equation and T is the operator which shifts Y to YQ. So it's a degree two equation. And the edge is uh, a diagonal operator. E1, uh, E1, E2, E3, E4. And it, uh, it consists of uh, and theoretical counts for empty divisors. So this is the explicit formula for it. And then uh, the partition function is uh, we take, uh, we glue two vertices, uh, the usual and the shifted one, glue it uh, along the edge. Then, so it's very similar to Molik, Nikrasov, Akunkov, and Pandrepande uh, vertex, exactly the same formula. But this has uh, actually finite. Uh, number of non-canceling terms because of polynomiality in Y. Uh, in um, usual MNOP vertex, we have series in Z. So let's now discuss the relative Pandrepande Thomas theory. So uh, if we have some uh, divisor D in X, uh, some smooth divisor, then we have uh, the real, uh, relative and the Pandrepande Thomas theory. It is some uh, larger modular space. It allows uh, X to bubble off a copy of the form, which is projectivization of uh, the structure shift of D plus the normal bundle to D at X. So for example, if we have some divisor D, and uh, we have an element of Pandrepande Thomas theory so that co kernel um, is uh, away from the divisor, but it approaches the divisor. And then in this limit, suppose it is a point, then it, in this limit, we have um, a degeneration of X, uh, which is described by this toric diagram we have bubbling of this component and the, po the point is um, on the new component and it is the, uh, away from the new uh, divisor. Then the uh, we have a um, well-defined operation of intersection with uh, divide. If we have uh, some uh, shift or X ma mapping to F, the we tensor this with OD and the co-kernel of this map OX to F is disjoint from D. Then we have map from OD to F twisted by OD and this go is going to zero. So this defines an element of the Hilbert scheme of points on the divisor. In our main example, the divisor is the union of fibers over zero and infinity. So if we uh, push forward the virtual structure shift um, with respect to these maps, it defines an operator on the K theory of the Hilbert scheme. Um, so also we can impose non-singular uh, non -singular boundary conditions at uh, divisors, just requiring a kernel to be supported away from the divisor. Then we get non-compact non moduli space, but uh, we still can compute uh, push forwards by localization because uh, uh, fixed low loci are still um, compact. And we have operators with uh, various kinds of uh, boundary conditions. If we don't impose any boundary condition at zero and impose non-singular non-singular condition at infinity 
then this object is called bare vertex. It's an element of the key theory of the Hilbert scheme. And if we impose relative, uh, then this is called kept vertex. Now, if we consider two-point function, for example, relative non-singular, then we get the so-called capping operator. And if we impose relative relative, then we get the gluing matrix. Uh, the capping operator, so again, I have a mistake here. Should be side B. Uh, the capping operator satisfies the Q difference equation. So psi of qz times O of one uh, is equal to m of z times psi of z. m of z is the operator of quantum difference equation. Uh, yes. So O of one is the multiplication by the tautological bundle. For Hilbert scheme, the Picard group is one dimensional. So it's a unique uh, bundle. And this is the equation. And operator M of Z uh, can be also defined geometrically. Similarly to gluing matrix, relative, uh, relative, but we impose some tautological insertion at one point. Also, we can define shift operator. If we have co, um, co-character from uh, C, star, uh, C star to the torus acting on the Hilbert scheme, which doesn't have to preserve the symplectic form. Then we can consider um, shift operators. Uh, these are operators which shift the fundamental solution to the quantum difference equation. We shift, uh, they shift variables in these solutions. This edge of A is analog of O of one. So this is the equation and they commute with the um, quantum difference equations. So if we first take by M and then by the shift operator with shifted Keller parameter, then it's the same as uh, action by the shift operator and then by the difference operator with shifted equivariant variables. S operator can be similarly defined uh, as gluing, the gluing matrix, but for twisted geometry. Uh, in quasi maps, we impose that the, uh, not necessarily, okay, let, let's use three dimensional language. We just co uh, consider Ponderipande Thomas theory of threefold O of M plus O of N and the same uh, dividers. Then it is clear that weights for of bundles at zero and infinity are shifted. If at infinity we have T1, T2, then at zero we have T1 times Q to M and T2 times Q to N. And this uh, commutation relation between S and M can be explained as follows. We have some uh, computation uh, with relative boundary conditions and twisted geometry with the insertion of some tautological bundle at zero. It's the same, uh, we can degenerate it two ways. Degenerate to a nodal curve and uh, uh, we can put twisted geometry on first, on the first or on the second um, uh, component. Then, uh, then we have uh, products of uh, shift operators in different order. And there is an explicit uh, formula for the operate, uh, quantum difference uh, operator uh, which was uh, invented by Andrei Apinkov and Andrei Smirnov. It is given by product of, of all operators times the classical multiplication by tautological bundle. So it's, uh, in, since for Hilbert scheme of points, um, Picard group 
uh, is one uh, one dimensional so it's realification is also one dimensional and uh, it turns out that uh, there are walls at each um, at each uh, rational point m of m over n and the wall operator for the wall m over n is non trivial only for hilbert scheme of uh, k points on c2 where k is larger than n uh, so for Hilbert scheme of two points, um, only um, um, the, uh, there are only non-trivial uh, non-trivial wall operators with the denominators less or equal than two. So for the, uh, then m of z is the product of operators b zero times b one half times o of one. So and for W equals to M over N, uh, there is a Heisenberg algebra at this slope, alpha KW. So all the algebra that acts uh, here is, uh, there is action of UQ of GL1 double hat, the quantum toroidal algebra on the Hilbert, uh, the K theory of the Hilbert scheme. It has the Schiffman basis, which is uh, parameterized by uh, pairs of integers by, by Z2. And uh, we have uh, a, a lot of Heisenberg algebras for each slope. And uh, the wall operator for the um, wall W, which is M over M, it is uh, uh, described by this formula, which is the normally ordered exponent of the sum uh, alpha kw, alpha minus kw, uh, with some correction depending on z. So for example, uh, one half in the, for this case of Hilbert scheme of two points, uh, we have only two, two non-trivial terms the identity operator plus the operator alpha minus one times alpha one. Alpha one is uh, the annihilation operator and alpha minus one is the creation operator. So alpha one, it acts from the K theory of Hilbert scheme of two points uh, to K theory of the Hilbert scheme of one point. Uh, so, um, this the second non-trivial uh, the, the second um, uh, part of the operator b one half it factors through one dimensional space that's why it has rank one and it's important here that the operator b zero the um, the wall operator at zero which is basically the same as the gluing matrix. It has poles at z squared equals one. And B1 has poles at z squared times Q equals one. So in stable basis, it turns out that the operator of uh, the quantum difference equ equation and the shift operators for such shift I think I have a mistake here. It should be Q minus one. The shift operator, which shifts, which doesn't shift the symplectic form. So it acts on T1 by Q and T2 by Q inverse. So consider these two operators. They are the same in the stable basis. If we, if we make change of variables. So this corresponds to, if we have T1, T2, and T3, T4, and we switch these pairs. But also we can consider some other shift operators which may shift uh, the, um, which uh, may shift the, uh, the symplectic form. And they are still the same in some basis, but I don't know what these bases are geometrically. Uh, I have some formulas for them, but there is no 
uh, definition of stable envelopes uh, which work when we shift uh, the, the uh, symplectic variable. So um, then the nature explanation would be to interpret such operators, uh, uh, the quantum difference equation, the shift operator and other shifts as uh, uh, when we decompose the five dimensional space to P1 times two, um, two, uh, two dimension, two, um, uh, two, two, bund two other bundles X2, one and X2, two, two, uh, which can be fibered over P1 non trivially. And uh, then S operator will be shift in the first x21 and m will be shift in the second x22 and also mixed shifts and m theory considers equivalent and Keller variables on equal footing so uh, how can we define uh, uh, local insertions in m theory so for the component when we when the membrane can double in li so uh, and divisor uh, d we can consider this uh, two point function to be shift uh, to uh, to be twist of the usual uh, count by the restriction of the divisor li of minus d at zero uh, raised to power a and li of minus d restricted to infinity to power b. This is the only local expression in the divisor. And we can define uh, operators uh, two by two when a uh, ranges from between zero and minus one and b ranges from zero to one then it turns out that this um, this evaluation a and b is still a polynomial in y if the degree of bundles is uh, minus two or larger it has to be even for the square root uh, from the canonical bundle to exist but it can be any uh, positive any non-negative so um, this looks very, very similar to the case of local curve, the two examples that we discussed. For the degree of, um, if we have some of uh, degrees of line bundles, L, L alpha E, when it is uh, strictly less than minus two, then uh, there should be some other terms, counter terms, which we don't see yet. Because uh, for this case, in, in formulas, we have numerators uh, uh, which have degree more than denominators. And the expansion in the divisors, uh, fixed and variant divisors, it looks like uh, expansion uh, in the pole with respect to poles of rational function. If we have some rational function, uh, if we, which, which is not proper, then we have also some a contribution at infinity. So for example, if we have decomposition of rational functions of x, uh, if we have these functions and numerators one or x, then it has such decompositions. But if we have x squared, then we have additional contribution. This may be the reason when, uh, the, uh, the reason why it's not polynomial if uh, the degree is uh, negative. So, and the explanation, the toy model explanation, the fact that y0, uh, y to zero yeah, component sorry, is, yes, sure. Did you say that this is even when it's not a polynomial, it's a rational function or did you say something else? Uh, I haven't checked it yet. Um, I have some 
numerical uh, problems to, to, cal to calculate it quickly and recognize uh, rational function. But I am working on, on it. So it's a very okay. interesting question. Okay. Thank you. So, but, but, but in the identities uh, that I check, always it's important to set y equals one in the rest. So I don't know how to uh, deform all this integrable large stru uh, structure to a non-trivial y. So still we have some vanishing, but, but I can't deform it for, for otherwise. So the explanation of the baby explanation why uh, y to zero component is the platistic exponent of um, of uh, degree one contributions is the following. If we consider the invariant with respect to the two part of this expression rational where the group uh, two uh, where the group z2 acts by a sign on each the uh, variable ti. This has this decomposition. So it comes from the resolution of um, singularities. Um, Cn modulo z2. It's O of minus two bundle over P, P n minus one. And uh, the right hand side is the localization formula for this uh, variety. So a natural question uh, related to the case when we have positive bundle uh, is to consider to, to uh, invent a similar decomposition for the wedge uh, power instead of symmetric power. So for this case, we should consider superspace. Okay. We should consider superspace Cn shifted to degree one modulo z2. But I don't know uh, anything f about the resolution of singularities for such kind of spaces. So, and the conjecture is that the operators for these bundles, if we have of minus one, minus one, one and minus one, and if we have one minus one minus one and one and minus one, so they are gauge equivalent to operators m of z and s of z, and if we put one and uh, but uh, this is very specific uh, how we do projection for uh, m from m theory to uh, to uh, the Andrepande Thomas theory. So for when we consider operators, um, then this is some a question, question. This uh, this so, is what this is. You say you take uh, uh, restrict to same stable and you set y to one, or or if this is with y or without y. This this uh, this this operator. So it's true that it's polynomial in y if we sum over uh, not only stable, uh -huh. but okay. uh, to, to have geometric meaning of such objects, uh, mm -hmm. we should impose y equals one. Okay, but then, then why do you, this is just some, uh, you know, two by two matrices with not so many terms. Is that really hard? This is, um, why is, so how, why is this a conjecture? So, is that difficult to compute it or is? Oh. Mm. It seems you only have one, you only have one positive direction. And so this, uh, there's somehow not, not, not great many terms on this formula as far as I, in this matrix. No, but but they, they come not only from positive direction, but also negative. So uh, let me write here. We have y to deck to the degree L, L alpha, L alpha minus the degree of divisor. So the degree of L alpha can be positive and d large. And also we should add to this case when degree of L alpha is negative and the degree of d is smaller. So actually there are a lot of terms. 
Oh, okay. But uh, when I say that y equals to one is important, I mean, for example, if we write m of z as some bundles, for example, uh, bundles minus one, minus one, one and minus one, and write m of z inverse as bundles minus one, minus one, uh, minus one and one. And when we glue two such operators to get a trivial operator, we should impose uh, y equals one because otherwise we will have terms y squared as well. So it turns out that terms y squared and y, they, they combine to something simple. Uh, so we have a factorization of everything uh, when y equals to zero. So y to zero term is, uh, it transforms just with itself, but all other, they mix with each other. And uh, it's important to put y equals one. So uh, for operators, um, M and S, uh, they, uh, uh, we should put these bundles, but uh, we should think of them as uh, bundles zero, zero, one and minus one. Uh, and the uh, sum of all four bundles should be zero for operators. So, but in the formulas of weights of, of these two by two matrices, we have, uh, bundles so that uh, the sum of um, all, all of them is negative two. So there is additional operat uh, operators at boundary points which shift the uh, degrees of bundles. So for M of Z, we should shift first and second. And for S of Z, we should shift uh, third and fourth. So as I said, y zero term. Um, so, sorry, Yasha? Yes? Is there a kind of geometric argument or, or kind of picture as to why these M and F should be related to shifting these bundles the way you say they are? Why A and B is related? What? Sorry? Why, why M corresponds to this particular choice of bundles and S corresponds to this particular choice of this other choice? Oh, uh, be because of the, uh, let's consider weights of them. For example, at the point infinity of the first, it is T1 of the second T2 of the third, something like Z over root of T1, T2. And of the fourth, it's uh, one over Z root t1 t2 so if we have these bundles one and minus one the third and the fourth bundles it corresponds that z is multiple multiplied by q and t1 and t2 is not shifted great yeah that's very helpful thanks okay uh, so, uh, uh, oh, y to zero term is always symmetric. It's a matrix of symmetric and wedge powers of, uh, I forgot to write here also the statistic exponents of the sum of uh, Li bundles. Um, so that, um, uh, um, so it doesn't have poles in uh, z squared times q equals one. So it has poles only at z squared q to 2n equals one. So z is equal to q to some integer power. Z is some integer power of q, such terms. And uh, no, y to zero term is a decomposable tensor of rank one, which has poles at z squared times q equals one. So, and it turns out that in some way, 
if we consider, for example, shift by um, which maps z to z, for example, q squared. Uh, then this is m of z q, m of z. And um, if we write, apply uh, this uh, formula in terms of wall matrices, we have b1, b0, b1, uh, b1 half, b1, b3 halves. Then uh, uh, b0 and b1 has poles in the Keller parameter, uh, has poles at integer powers of q and b1 half and b3 halves at semi-integer, semi-integer. So if we now write b1 half and b3 halves, each as identity matrix plus some matrix of rank one, and this as identity plus rank one. Then if we write y in front of them, then this will be the y grading of the um, membrane computation. So, uh, but for if we consider, for example, m of z, m of z inverse, then this uh, and evaluate it, we have contributions which are ones, then something proportional to y, then something proportional to y squared. But this is this should be equal to identity operator. It's not true that y squared operator and y operator separately vanish, only their sum. And that's what I mean, that uh, we can't deform it. We can deform to non-trivial y's, uh, and we should uh, substitute y equals one in the end. Oh, okay, uh, that's what I wanted to talk today. Uh, if you have any questions, you are very welcome. All right, sounds like we have uh, like half an hour for questions, so I certainly. Can I ask? <laughs> sure. Uh, I have a question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so, so this moduli of main brains, so are they defined for any smooth quasi-projective threefolds? Uh, I don't know how, how to define the full modular space, even in the case of four bundles over fixed uh, locus. So, oh, I, mm. oh so, so the definition of the moduli space is, is not known. It's no. not known for me. Oh. No, there's some, there's some definition in our paper with Nikita, but that, that, uh, that doesn't have a good abstraction to you, what we write down there. We, we somehow there's some kind of hypothesis as to what the what the right moduli spaces might be. But it's, uh, oh, okay, I see. So, uh, so, 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 suppose suppose that you can eventually uh, define this. Uh, so, so when do you expect to have this polynomiality in Y? Uh, I just uh, checked uh, the cancellation of um, the cancellation of uh, uh, poles uh, in uh, when we have. Um, I just checked the case when we ship only the uh, variable z, and uh, I checked that uh, the. Poles, uh, the residues at poles in Z cancel, but I don't know any any good uh, proof of it. Maybe I'll clarify the question. So I think I might understand you for you what the claim is Yash was making is the following. So suppose you have, uh, so we, we, you know, you can define some moduli spaces of stable membranes in this instance. 
but uh, you can also lift the stability condition. You can just also close your eyes and integrate over unstable or, or semi-stable or unstable point. And then, and then the, I think Yash, I believe Yash is saying the following: that if you integrate over, so if you integrate not just over semi-stable, so the integral over stable is always going to be a polynomial in Y, just by definition. Mm -hmm. but Yash says, suppose you integrate over semi-stable, then then the new contribution from the semi-stable that's just the that's just the um, like a kind of a like a double covering contribution from degree one. So that's 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 one claim. And I think I believe so. Yasha will correct me if I'm wrong. And then if you just look at the unstable stuff, that just cancels. That you can integrate over that, but that's just zero. So that's uh, that's uh, that's my understanding of what Yasha is saying. Uh, but there's this uh, condition on the degrees of the sum of degrees of L alpha. Right, right. But it's whatever this, whatever the condition of degree, the stable locus is always has finitely many connected components. Is the way that stability is defined. And so since Y kind of indexes this, this different components, that there will be always a polynomial in Y. Oh, I think oh. there's a, yeah. but I think what, 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 I mean, Yasha will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what his computation is, is you write some formula which is, makes sense, I mean, it makes sense, but it really you integrate over unstable things. And then, the things which you which you uh, get from this unstable integration, they all just cancel. And so that's uh, oh. Oh. Oh, it's convenient. You. It's convenient. It's convenient to have them because you see, if you are uh, if you degenerating, if you degenerating a stable object, that may degenerate. First of all, it may degenerate to something which is semi stable. Suppose you have a break up a curve, and then you have uh, something which is uh, like you know, semi-stable on one. Com the way stability is defined that if you have something which is kind of like semi-stable on one part, but glued to something stable on the other part, that is stable. And uh, uh, and then um, so that's inconvenient. Restriction to just the stable locus in the generation formula is very inconvenient. And so if Yasha's approach if works, that'd be great because you just write the generation formula, you just integrate over everything. But then the stuff you didn't want in the beginning that just that just cancels by itself, and so that's uh, uh, that that'll be that'll be. I don't know. I shouldn't speak for Yasha too much, but I think this is uh, that would be if that if something like this could be true. Then in terms of just stating, like stating and proving the generation formula should be much easier because you don't have to worry about handling handling the cases where you know something stable on one side. In the one component, something not stable in the other component, and things like that. So that's. Oh, well, thank you. Yes, but but if uh, uh, if the degree uh, of L i L alpha is uh, negative, very negative, then it's not true that they uh, vanish. Oh, I see. So it's, it's, it's similar, more unique, but they still vanish when y is sufficiently. They still, well, maybe you get finally many terms, but they still vanish eventually, or I mean, they got to, or do you think they just not vanish at all? They they don't vanish uh, if we consider uh, degrees with fixed uh, uh, terms with fixed uh, degree in Y. Okay. But oh, but yeah. no no way to make sense of infinite sum if we don't introduce Y. And it's similar to the case of local curves. Because uh, if the bundles L3 and L4 are so with a lot of uh, sections, then we have denominator and uh, we have a series in Keller parameter. Otherwise, we have a polynomial. Okay, maybe they, maybe, but, but what would be somehow reasonable to imagine that this is always a rational function in Y at least? Yeah, I, I will try to to manage to. Yeah, you should you should try to compute some examples. Yeah, this y is kind of like so. So in M theory, when you, you so this is, this y is a little bit like that. So you'd like to say, well, in M theory, you're supposed to sum over all possible, kind of you know threefold, and in threefold, you I mean world space of a membrane is threefold, and so and you previously where you had uh, in string theory you took a, a World, the world sheet of a 
string was a, was a Riemann surface, and that had the topological invariant, namely Euler characteristic. And so, so, so then, the, or the, whatever the number of handles and something like that. And so then you interpreted that as um, you could weight surfaces with different Euler characteristic by um, by saying, well, this strings, you know, the kind of strings came together or strings. Tore, tore apart, and so then you weigh them with the with something that has to do with string coupling concept. Now a threefold, then uh, it doesn't work like this because a threefold Euler well, characteristic of its smoothage is zero, so there's no there's no uh, there's no similar discrete invariant. Oh, but but what I think what is Y is trying to do here is be like genus, and it's sort of you know kind of you you in the situation which we where we we can't define something like the Euler well, characteristic for all threefolds. But for 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 membranes of this particular kind, namely you have a like a curve. So the membranes we consider here are not an arbitrary threefold, but they are of the form like a, a curve cross S one. And so for something like this one, can introduce uh, uh, can introduce some number, which is namely the genus of the curve, so that, or some or other characteristic of that curve, and that other characteristic is y. So that is this variable which is shouldn't be there in some in some you know, fully, fully, uh, what's the word? Fully covariant M theory because it's just you know you you, you should also I mean this is this is this is an operation which is this is a recipe which I don't think applies to I mean there's no way to apply it to general threefold, but uh, but you can apply it here and so that's a uh, so that's a, uh, it's kind of. And so that was worth investigating whether this theory with uh, with this y somehow has something to do with either collab with either Grom Witten theory of five folds or some such theory. So if you take a Grom Witten theory of five folds that really has that variable, the genus variable, there's a genus variable in every single dimension. So you can you can try to investigate whether you can and there's some kind of matching of that variable y to uh to the Grom Witten theory of five folds. So that's an that's a that's an interesting theory. This is uh, like uh, I think for a whole bunch of there was maybe Clem wrote some papers about it. It's uh, and it has some. And uh, for Grom Witten five fold theory, can Y be interpreted as an equivariant parameter in some dual theory? No, no, that would that Y is really. No, I think Y is something. No, I think I don't know. I mean, it's but it's worth thinking about something like this because here for membranes with some overall membranes is respective of the genus as we should uh, as we should in in, in in somehow fully covariant M theory. There's no variable like genus, but uh, for this, uh, but uh, you know, seems to me that introducing this Y is useful. And so one should ex exploit this extra variable. And like I think one one place where I think you you could try to compare it with, you could try to compare it with either Grom Witten, either the Grom Witten theory of uh, of uh, of that fivefold or some another thing to do. Since you're mapping to an orbifold, you might as well think about how would this theory compare with Grom Witten theory of that five-dimensional orbifold. That or whatever some not five dimensional, whatever dimensional or before. So then you so. Okay. But I, it can be defined totally cohomologically at the ground. No or before no or before to well, I don't know. Yeah. There's some issues. Yeah. You can you can well you can think of there's maybe there is a maybe there is a the square root of the virtual canonical. I mean that's something to investigate. Okay. Interesting. Thank you very much. But so, so suppose are you so what is really missing is some you have a uh, my understanding from your talk is that you have some some guesses as to what the relative membrane theory should look like for degree two local curves, but there isn't there isn't some 
degeneration formula yet, or not even not even a shape of degeneration formula somehow known. Or there is, but, but I didn't figure out the geometric meaning of this uh, gluing matrix for M theory. And I, and I didn't check it for uh, a lot of cases. I checked only when we, we shift, for example, Z variable by N and N plus M. But I don't know yet how it interacts with other shifts. For other shifts, it seems that we uh, have some other uh, boundary conditions. Okay. Oh, more questions? Could you go back to this uh, difference equation? This this uh, sort of hypergeometric okay. function. Ah, okay. If it's not a pain, don't. If, if it's annoying, don't worry about it. Oh. Okay, can you see now? Yeah, perfect, thanks. Sorry, I just came kind of fast the first time. Silly, silly remark that there's, a, there's really no point run two terms in the denominator. You just write product of over all j. And in particular, when j equals i, you get that q. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> But do you get it with however many time? Oh, there's just T1 and T2. So you would get it twice though, right? Uh, I have four of them, but there should be some dependence between them. Because, so we have this formula and we have similar formula for just MNOP vertex. Uh, so it, then uh, they four mu must be dependent. So if we look at this formula, V1 and V2. Ah, ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. V1 and V2, in the, if we decompose it as a series in Z, then they have poles exactly as uh, the vertex for two boxes in a row or in a column. And V3 and, and V4 are regular if we decompose it in Z. Mm -hmm. But, but oh. I, I didn't okay. Sorry, Yash, I actually, so can I, I, I think I'm gonna, maybe I missed the point, maybe I'll ask this equation, maybe this is already what Noah asked, but I missed, missed it, sorry, I, I dosed off for a second. So this is, how many linearly independent solutions this equation has, is that the equation of order, which order? This is equation of order two, but uh, for each vi, it's different equation, because it depends on i. Ah, but is there a way to normalize them, they somehow, are these four functions really, really dependent? So it'd be great if they were only two really independent ones because because the space of, I mean, it seems to be like the space of boundary condition should really be two dimensional, not four dimensional. So if there's a way to, to somehow make them all solution of the same equation, there's, there's no way to do it. I, I don't know how to do it, but, but I think it should be possi possible because of this formula. We can glue four four component vertices, and we can glue two component vertices, and get the same answer. This is possible only if these four are dependent. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, for other shifts, it wouldn't be equivalent for some shifts. Like like different like different vertices, the solutions of the same some sufficiently high order equations, right? That's, that's kind of the basic thing in, in, in yeah. VT theory. So it'd be great if these were solutions of, I mean, can, can you somehow massage them to be solutions of the same equation, which will exhibit them as, as, a, as a kind of, you know, so it means you have some equation, uh, but, uh, but they're just solutions with different analytic properties. Well, strictly speaking, this, the space of solution to Q difference equation is infinite dimension. So 
So, but if you're if you're a pick some analytic properties such as you know being a series or something like this, then you get the space of solution to be whatever the to be the uh, have the same dimension as the degree of the equation. But, uh, yes, probably. But but have you uh, have you met somewhere when you have uh, like hypergeometric function but to n instead of n? What, what does it mean? Is there any theory for such special functions? No, but I think they still what you have is still a uh, you can I mean first of all everything with two n you can write as t i you know whatever some you maybe shift the q's to be uh, you know you can the, all I'm saying to say there's a general theory of hyper kind of linear q difference equations and so in which sense that maybe. Not such a um, what I'm trying to say. Um, I think in the in this in the world of general solutions of linear key difference equations, I think this is not as as as, a, as a, such an esoteric series. I think it's. If we break t i squared to n to two to two chains, then each chain will be will be with q squared instead of q. And that's why in the equation we have t squared. So we have, but numerator and denominator they have equal degrees in t. That's why it's two by two equation. It's a two uh, degree two equation. Also, this is equation in Y. Maybe I should investigate equations in some other variables. Actually, I, I'm confused. Why do you say it's degree two? It seems like you have four. Some some something like you know something roughly of degree roughly of four and t, or the. Uh, oh, you are right actually. So in the denominator we have like t minus t inverse for for each a hat. So yeah. Yes, exactly. I I will. So the, I, so I the that's the reason that it has four solutions, not not. Uh, yes. More questions? Still not, 11 minutes to go. <laughs> we need more questions. Well. Oh, I have a silly question. Yeah, so th this uh, obstruction theory you wrote down for M theory? Yes. You wrote this one explicitly. What's the rank? Uh, uh, rank? It's it's some virtual. So so. For, I think it has. Rank four. Uh, oh no no. Uh, but, but, but this is just PT. I mean, are you asking for the virtual dimension of a PT moduli space? That, no, that I'm okay with, I guess. But but yeah, so I'm trying to compare the PT to this M, M theory thing. Ah, okay. Like, should I really think of this as some kind of PT obstruction space and, and the obstruction should just match up, or is this some kind of different? But, 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 
it depends on the degree of the divisor. Okay. So if it's if it's just the degree of the of this d, it's some linear function on the degree of the divisor. Mm. No, of that I'm not sure. I think it's the it's like the first thing you check is, uh, or I think the first thing we checked is that the modular space have at least the same virtual dimension. So. And uh, which would mean that so in in PT situation, of course, the you know, all the series so you sum up all the spaces they have the same virtual dimension. So that would be that would be my guess here too. But 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 just by Riemann Rock theorem, we see that the uh, degrees uh, the rank of the other characteristic it, it depends on d. So if we we look at this uh, this second line of this formula the contribution of D is not balanced. Right, but then there is a, then there is a t tangent space which is also depends on D, right? Ah, ah yes, if we include it, uh, may, may, maybe, maybe then uh, it's true, yes. So this the 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 simplest possible case here is just you get uh, like the uh, like the cotangent bundle to the symmetric power, and so that has uh, that would be the virtual dimension to zero, and then it's independent of of uh, so there's a well, I think if you're um, I forgot what's the was the condition I think there's some condition of L three and L four when this abstraction theory that's just the cotangent bundle to the symmetric power, and so that's. Uh, I think the general virtual dimension is all that's that's certainly independent of D, and I think the general virtual dimension is also independent of D. Okay. So this second part here, I should think so all of this, or another way of like twist. Uh, say again. Like this, this second part here, I should think of as some kind of twist to the, I guess, uh, cotangent bundle or something, uh, to to this um, power. Well, let's see, what was it in terms of dimension? So I think, um, I don't know. I mean, it's been a while. Yash is the person to answer this question, not me. Uh, but I think. Okay, okay. Okay, so may maybe the first, in the cases when this kind of Membrane space really matches up with PT. The obstruction theory should also match up. No, no, no. It, it's not. No, it doesn't match up completely. There's a. The, that's the point. I think there's a. Then there's there's a, there's a part in PT theory. There's somehow there. So in PT theory, I mean this divisor and the divisor in PT theory have slightly different meaning. In PT theory, you sum over all of them. And here you sum over finitely many of them, and they, they, it's not like that you actually, they're, they're, in, they're, they're, yeah, this is, this is something slightly different here. Like in the B, so in PT theory, there's a, in degree one, you sum over all divisors, uh, whereas in, 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 in here, in membranes, it's just, uh, that's just one point. There's, you just integrate over one point. And so this this divisor here is not is not that divisor there. I don't think. Okay. So you think divisor here and degree divisor in low uh, in the local curve uh, for three dimensional case is uh, have completely different meanings. Mm. Well, no, they still point on the curve. Well, I'm saying that in 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 PT theory you get. You get the contributions, you only see three dimensions. The contribution from extra dimensions you get from points running around the curve. Yes. And, that's, uh, and so that is uh, whether, whether uh, well, it's, whereas here you, you, you know, something else, like in degree one, there'll be no divisors. So for example, so you don't have to integrate over that divisor. But we can integrate, but it's zero. Right, I mean, just one point, yeah. Exactly. But, but may, maybe this divisor also 
represent some integration over may maybe seven dimensional variety. Maybe, I don't know. Well, more qu if there are more, if there are no more questions, there's certainly plenty of things to think about that, uh, for, for for everybody and for Yasha himself. And so, that's, uh, thank you so much, Yasha, for very uh, for very intriguing and stimulating talk. And uh, and then uh, I encourage everybody to who hasn't signed up to give a an encourage a stim to I encourage everybody who hasn't signed up yet to give. Uh, a talk to do so and uh well we'll see everybody next week same same time thanks again yes thank you very much for excellent questions and comments